friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. So today is my monthly Apocalyptic Beauty subscription unboxing and try on. I love this monthly subscription in case you guys are new here. It's so fun, it's always very curated, it has a cool theme. I always consider it kind of Halloween-y because it's always just based on something almost a little more creepy or spooky or costumey, Halloween-y. I just adore it, I think it's a lot of fun. Apocalyptic Beauty is an indie brand. They're cruelty-free, of course, because I only use cruelty-free products here on my channel. Their monthly subscription is $14 a month, and you get, I believe, four to five products from their brand that they create and curate for the cute little bag and send it to you. Typically, it's three eyeshadows, a sometimes a glitter, sometimes a liquid lipstick, sometimes it's four shadows, sometimes there's a bronzer, sometimes there's a highlight. It's a pretty good collection, but it's definitely mostly gonna be eyeshadows, and I really have fun with this bag. It's not too often I run into one that I really don't like as far as just a product in the bag. Sometimes it's not my favorite color in the world, but I haven't really had issues with the performance, honestly. I think I've had a couple purples, maybe my first bag I ever got that I didn't love, but for the most part, I love absolutely everything I get from this bag. It's a lot of fun, and if you choose to shop from their site, besides the monthly subscription package, you can't use my code on that, but if you choose to shop on anything else on the site, you can use my code BUTBEAN for 15% off. I don't get direct money, but I do get store credit for the shop to try more things. And with that being said, I actually got some more shadows, I got a highlight, I got one of their setting sprays, and I actually got this shadow too, but I actually already have this shade and I forgot, so I'll just give that to one of you eventually. But I used all this with store credit thanks to you guys making purchases with my code, so thank you very much. But I figured maybe I would even try to use some of these shades in this look as well. I ordered specifically mattes because I don't really have a whole lot of mattes from them. Typically they are shimmers, once in a while I get a matte in a subscription bag, but I usually end up having to pull in another palette to create my look. So now I will have some mattes from Apocalyptic Beauty to just complete the look in its entirety. The theme this month is Wasteland Warrior. I'm really excited about that. I think it's gonna be cool, very biohazardy. I like it. And it looks like we got three eyeshadows, a cream shadow and a bronzer slash bronze highlight, okay. So as far as right now, I knew that I was getting the bronzer kind of thing. I didn't really look in the bag itself, but I did read the card prior to this. I have my cream bronzer on, I have concealer, and I did set my face, but I don't have anything else on because I figured we would try the bronzer together. I already emptied the bag, but this is what the bag itself looks like. I like this burlapy looking sack. It's really cute. I like using these for jewelry whenever I travel, which is not very often, but when I do, these little bags are handy, and Zane also likes to use them to carry his dice for his gaming and things like that. So let's swatch the bronzer because I'm curious as to how shiny it is because I don't like intensely shimmery bronzers. I do like a sheen, but if it's too sparkly, I won't like it. But this one is called Thunderdome. Let's kind of see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's way too shiny for me. This would be a beautiful highlight on deeper skin tones though. It's got a really nice pretty gold shift to it. So I'm not putting this on my face, but I will potentially use this maybe as an inner corner highlight for this look. We shall see. But with that being said, let's just move on to some other face products really quick because I'm just not gonna wear bronzer, I'll just keep my cream bronzer. For blush, I'm just gonna pop on this one from ColourPop, it's called Count Me In. I'm just going to pop that all over my face right quick, my nose and my cheeks, and then we will move on to using this new Apocalyptic Beauty highlight that I got. All right, I'm sufficiently blushed, and now we can move on to the highlight. You guys might have already known this, but I was obsessed, slash still am obsessed, with the Polished Bone Loose highlight from Apocalyptic Beauty. It's so pretty, it's so creamy and white, but I wanted to try another one from them. So I picked up the Bright Side of Life. It's supposed to be a white with kind of a gold shift to it, and I thought that would be really pretty because I don't really have any gold-based highlights because it's really hard when you're pale. Let's kind of see what it looks like. Oh, that looks really pretty. I think that's very doable for my face. Let's give it a shot. I'm gonna start with my nose first. So a lot of product I got on. I am not having a good skin day today, I will tell you what. Like, I don't have bad acne or anything like that, but my face makeup is just not wanting to cooperate. Oh, that's such a pretty highlight, though. I like that gold reflect that it catches when the light hits it. However, my nose is losing its powder badly. I really didn't have much makeup on my nose to begin with. That's just gonna have to do. I like this highlight, though. I think that's really pretty on my skin. It's really hard for pale people to find a gold-based highlight, so now I have one. And my setting spray is the setting spray for the recently deceased. It has the Beetlejuice handbook for the recently deceased picture on the front of it. And I guess I'm just going to try it out. 
Oh, it smells good. I don't know off the top of my head what the scent is. Cause I'm bad at describing scents, but it smells really nice. That actually made my skin look really refreshed. Made everything look a little bit better in person. Okay, so now we have some shadows to play with. They also always send a candy and it always has to do with the bag and I think it's really cute. This one is a toxic waste, hazardly sour candy. <laughs> I will happily eat that, I love sour candy. So the first one we got is the After the End Black Cream Shadow. It says for precise strokes apply with an eyeshadow brush or I guess if you wanted it to just go all over the place you could use your finger. That's a pretty opaque cream black actually. This would be really nice on days that I want a very smoky look and want to have a black base instead of trying to make my eyeliner pencil stretch all over across my lid. This might work really well for that, providing it doesn't break up or do anything weird. I'm actually really excited about this. I hope it works well. And then we have three loose shadows. This one is called Nuclear Sunrise and it's described as a sunny orange over a red base. Let's see. Oranges are not my favorite shadow, so I'm not like living, breathing, dying for that shade, but it's cute. It's got a nice sparkle to it. I say this in all of these videos, but my favorite way to use the Apocalyptic Beauty shimmers are with the NYX Glitter Primer underneath of it. I feel like it just gives them that extra punch. By themselves, they're still pretty, but they could be so much better, and that is what this does for them. Kanade is trying to fit herself in the smallest box of all time. You're crazy. This next one is called Plague, and it's described as a golden olive with acid green undertones. That's okay. Again, I think this is one that's gonna give it more of that punch whenever I have a glitter glue underneath of it, but I like green, so I'm excited about that. And it's a very grungy, kind of mossy color. And this last one is called Apocalypse Chic, and it's described as an army green with warm shimmer. Let's see here. Oh, that is cute. That is making my grungy dreams come true. I actually really like these together. I don't typically like orange and green next to each other, but these just work because this one has that warmth to it, so it balances both out nicely. I don't know what look I'm going to do. I never do, but we're going to do something with these. Again, I want to try to use hmm, pretty much just these Apocalyptic Beauty shadows. Should I swatch the ones that I bought separately? Let's do it. This one is called Stupid Bunny Suit. It's a blue. I don't know where I'm going to put this. Let's just go with the palm of my hand. Oh, that's a really pretty matte blue. This one is called Oh No, Not Again. What do you look like? Are you matte or are you sparkly? Did I buy any sparkly ones? Well, this one has a little bit of sparkle to it, but for the most part, it's just a little bit sheeny. It's really pretty. I feel like Jeffree Star with my freaking hand swatches. I just, I don't want it all over my arms. I have to go to work after this. It's gonna be so much easier just to wash my hands. This one's called Psycho Billy. These are so freaking cute. What do you look like? Oh, that's pretty. I guess this one's a shiny one as well, but that's a really pretty shiny one. I would love someone to make a highlight color that kind of has a chartreuse-ness to it. I think that would be really cool. This one is called Tragic and Ironic and it's a matte purple. That's a little lackluster. Let me build it up a little bit more. Granted, these are palm swatches. I can't imagine things swatch the best on the palm of your hand where you're super dirty and oily from day to day life. I do wash my hands, I swear, but the palms of your hands are just different than the rest of your skin. This one's called Bucket of Blood. I bet you can guess what color that's gonna be. This is a matte red, and I hope this one is good because red eyeshadows can be weird. Oh, that's actually a pretty solid red. That went on pretty easily. I was kind of worried because when I first dipped in, it didn't look like much appeared on my finger. Very nice. And the last one is called Deadly Bees. I'm excited for this yellow. I'm running out of room to swatch things. Oh, that's cute. That's a really pretty just honey bee yellow kind of color. It's not insanely bright, but it's not like a mustard either. Well, this is what I got separately. I don't know if any of these are gonna help me out in this look. But we will see. She also sent me a couple samples of loose shadows and I have like a dark purple, a black. I don't know, I'll figure it out. I also might just run the yellow all across and then do kind of maybe an exaggerated wing with that black cream shadow. That could be a good way to test it out. So I'm just going to zoom you in. I'm gonna prime my eyes with my Smashbox Lid Primer in Light. I have really been enjoying the Sigma one, but I want to finish using the last little bits of this before I totally switch. So I'm gonna zoom you in, prime my eyes, and we will get started. Alrighty, hello. I'm going to go in first with Deadly Bees, which is that matte yellow. 
I just have that on a fluffy brush and I'm just going to start just kind of working that through my crease and blending it out nice and grungified. There's a mustard matte yellow that Apocalyptic Beauty makes. It was in their Voodoo box one month. It's called Pop It, I believe, but they did end up making that one a permanent shade, which makes me so happy because it's so pretty. I would actually probably use that in this look, but I don't feel like getting up to get it. So we're just gonna use the brighter yellow today. This yellow is so freaking cute. I can't handle it. I just can't handle it. I'm just blending this out nice and far under my lower lash line and my inner corner. Just everywhere. I want yellow all over my face at all times. So I mean that's it for our yellow moment. Now I just want to do... I really want that mustard. Let me go get it really quick. Okay, hello, I've returned. I got Pop It. <laughs> it's just such a good mustard. I can't resist. I'm taking some of that on just this little Lunar Beauty brush that came with that Life's a Drag palette 500 years ago. It's not even that old. I'm exaggerating so much. And I'm just gonna start, oops, grab too much. Working that just kind of through the crease and in the outer corner, just to deepen it a tad bit. But I am taking it slightly higher than my natural crease just because I am gonna take the wing kind of above my natural crease. Kind of like how I do a cut crease. I'm also gonna take some of that right underneath the outside half of my lower lash line. Kelly, are you being a bad girl? Gonna take that first brush now with no additional product just to blend things out more. Yeah, I'm glad I added this mustard in the mix. That's really pretty. Cute! So I just have this teeny tiny little, let me see how it dried on my hand. So it's definitely still got some tackiness to it, but it, for the most part it's a lot more dry. It's not soaking wet, and I bet once I lay a shadow on top of it, it'll totally dry down. But it doesn't seem to be separating. I'm taking some on this teeny tiny little precision elf brush. Going to pop some of that across my lid and then look up like I do when I'm doing a cut crease so I can kind of see where it transfers. And then I'm just gonna kind of draw a huge exaggerated wing with this paint. And obviously you could do a variation of this look where you just kind of pat this all over the lid, maybe blend it out a little bit, but I wanna do something crazy. Just kind of following on my lid where my crease made that product transfer. And especially in this outer corner, I like to start low cause I can start connecting that wing in bits rather than if I do too much. Cause I still do want it to look like a wing. This product seems to be spreading really easy. I definitely don't think this would work as a, like an actual eyeliner long term because it doesn't totally dry down. But for something like this where you're gonna layer something on top of it anyways, I think it might be pretty solid. Provided this doesn't do any weird transferring or cakiness or oiliness or anything, I could see this becoming a staple for me. And this product's just smoothing out really easy. It's not really too hard to work with. I worked with some products that are just so thick and it kind of skips around. This one just kind of glides where I want it to go. That's the end of that. My giant wing is on. I don't know what I want to do. I think I kind of want to do the dark green in the outer half and then blend it into the lighter green in the front half and then I might smoke that orangey shade under the lower lash line. I think that would look cute with those yellows. That's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll highlight my inner corner with that bronzy shade. I think that'll be pretty with this whole color scheme. So I'm going to try going in first without the NYX glitter glue because it might be fine over this base because it's tacky. I'm gonna take the shadow side of my Lunar Beauty brush. I'm going to dip right into that darker green. I'm going to just start laying it down right on top of it. So I can see it transferring a little bit more. Not the product's fault, my fault. We're not going up high enough. Not gonna blame a cream product for transferring where my eye transfers. Now, so I'm getting a little bit of fallout from this shade. I think I am gonna put at least my brush with some glitter glue because I do feel like I get less fallout if I have like some tackiness on my brush. So I'm just going to tap it out a little bit and then dip back into that darker green. I should have picked a smaller brush because I am making an absolute mess. Man, I'm making a big mess with this. This was poor planning. Okay, I'm gonna take this little brush with no product on it and I'm just gonna kind of dust right where I'm making a mess here. Just to try to crisp it up a little bit more. Yeah, that kind of wiped away nicely actually. I like the way that dark green looks because you can't really even tell that it's much of a difference compared to the black, but it just added a cool little 
moment, I don't know. I'm gonna take this little brush now. It's like a no-name brush. I don't know where it's from. I've had this forever. Take a little bit more of that NYX glitter primer. Stamp some of it on in the front half. And then I'm gonna dip into that lighter green shade. And just pop that right over top in the front half of this wing. I don't know how I'm feeling about this cream eyeshadow situation. It's just making everything look so dark, which I get it's black, but a lot of times with the black base, it makes shimmery shades like this pop a lot. This one's just making it look really dark. I'm taking a lot of product to build it up and I'm getting a lot of weird patches. I don't really know what's going on. And now I have a weird mess in my crease right here. Help, send help. I'm making a mess. I don't know what to do about it. Oh my gosh, there's fallout all over my face. I mean, it's definitely not horrible, but it's not my favorite look I've ever done by any means. This is very subpar to what I feel like I'm normally capable of. From afar, it does look like it's coming together kind of cool, but I do have weird weirdness in my crease that I don't like, and I definitely have black and green all over my skin. Whatever, it's gonna be okay. I'm going to pop some of this shimmery orange under my lower lash line now with a pencil brush. I'm gonna take my NYX glitter primer, lay down some of that right underneath my eye. I'm gonna dip in just into the cap because I'm frightened. <laughs> I don't want anything else bad to happen to this look. I'm just gonna go in a little at a time until it looks cute. Just smoking things out with that second brush that I used with the mustard, and then going in with that first brush with the lightest yellow. And now I guess I'm just gonna highlight my inner corner. I'm so not thrilled with this look. Ah, I'm not gonna use glitter primer because I don't necessarily need it to be opaque. I'm just taking a random fluffy brush just to kind of swirl in my inner corner. Yeah, that would definitely be too dark as a highlight and it wouldn't be the right bronzer shade for me. But it's not horrible. Oh my gosh, my face makeup looks so bad now. It looks so extra bad. Okay, I'm going to put Torch from Urban Decay in my waterline because it'll complement that lower lash line. All right, I'm going to do the other eye, I suppose. <laughs> gonna try to fix my face makeup a little bit and put on my lipstick and I will finish this up. All right, so this is the final look. What do you think? I feel like from far away, put together, it looks grungy, it looks kind of cute. But up close, I just, I can see that this just isn't my best work and it's not my favorite look ever. I'll go to work wearing it and it'll be fine. I'm gonna wear glasses because <laughs> I just feel a little self-conscious because it's not like quite to my standards of what I normally feel like I'm capable of. But overall, it's not bad. I feel like when I was doing the second eye, I don't think it's the black cream shadow that did it because it applies so well. My eyes don't feel sticky. Even now, this one's not breaking up or doing anything weird. I think it was the green shadows. I think they were just a little bit more on the sheer side. I don't think they got as pigmented as I was hoping for. But who knows, if I could go back, I probably would, I don't know, maybe do something very dark and smoky in the crease and then just lay down the glitter primer and do the same like light to dark green but just over the next glitter glue over my skin rather than the black base. But overall, I don't think any of these products were bad per se, but I do feel like these greens are a bit more sheer than what I typically like from this brand. However, I'm excited about the cream paint. I'm going to try using it a few more times with other shadows, other products, see how it goes. I like the orange one, it's cute. I really liked this kind of bronzy shade as an inner corner highlight. It's not my favorite thing in the world for me, but it is a pretty color. It looks cute in my inner corner. My lashes are unknown. They're from the Lash Graveyard. I don't know what they are. And on my lips, I went with Dose of Colors Cork. I thought it would complement this kind of grungy vibe look nicely. And fun fact, this is my favorite liquid lipstick of all time. And it was nice to pull it out again. But like I said, overall, I don't hate this look or anything. I just don't feel like it was my favorite bag at all. This actually might be my least favorite bag so far. But again, it's not because I hated things. It's just because it didn't... I don't know. I wasn't as excited about this one. However, next month's is Fairy Witch. And I'm excited about that one. That one sounds like it's going to be really cool. And July's is my birthday month, so we'll see what happens. I think last year, around my birthday time, is the first year that I wore 
an apocalyptic beauty bag. It was like the Spider Queen one. So I guess I've had this for almost a year now. So I'm excited. I can't wait for next month. Let me know what you guys thought of this month's bag. Did you guys have the same issues that I did? What do you think? Let's just chat in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Beat Bean. Follow me there. I post every single day. And don't forget to subscribe here before you leave. I post at least five days a week. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.